y'all. Um, we are going on our fourth day of winter weather here in Louisiana, which is really weird. And normally we'll get a day or two of this icy, wintry mix, and then it's gone. And so we can run back up down the roads again, but we can't right now. So um, we're literally icy. <laughs> here in the deep south, what is happening? What is happening? I don't know. So I've been digging around in my freezer and my cabinets and seeing what I was going to put today. I want to cook up something really um, comforting. Uh, it's been sleeting and freezing rain for 12 hours now, so I'll be here about dark tonight. The lights are going to go out. Um, just the reality of it, not trying to be negative. So I thought I'd make you something really warm and comforting this evening because uh, then we're going to be eating whatever I can heat. In a, out of a can, right? <laughs> yeah. So, um, let's get started. These are some things. I thought I'd make a chicken pot pie. I've got um, a package. I found a frozen package. I think it was about a two-pound package of chicken thighs, boneless, skinless chicken thighs. I've got those cooking on the stove for us and making us a little broth. You can use some canned chicken broth if you've got, like, um, a rotisserie chicken or you don't have anything to make broth with, you can add some canned chicken broth. I've got a potato. We love a potato in our um, pot pie, so we put potato. I found a little baggie of some frozen English peas, and I found a bag of some peas and carrots I'm going to put. And y'all know how I chop veggies and freeze them. These are some chopped onions. Um, I've got onions to chop, but I'm going to use those frozen ones and some chopped celery. We need some heavy whipping cream. If you don't have it, you can use milk. I've got some um, dried parsley because my, my parsley during the winter is not growing real well. I've got butter. I've got thyme. And I love to put turmeric into this. And I need an egg for an egg wash. If you don't have that, you can use some more butter or some milk on your egg, on your crust. Um, today, I'm going to use puff paste. John loves it when I put this for our crust. If you don't have this, you can use a pie crust. If you don't have that, you can use canned biscuits put all on top for your pot pie. If you don't have canned biscuits um, and you've got a biscuit mix, you can mix up with some milk and just drop spoonfuls on top. So somehow, maybe you've got a way to make some crust today. Um, first thing I'm going to do is get my potato peeled and chopped, and I'm going to move y'all over to the stove. I'm going to drain my broth off my chicken thighs and chop my chicken thighs, but I'm saving my broth, okay? So I'll get y'all over here to the stove now. Guys, I want to tell y'all this story. John and I have been working on this farm during this snowstorm, and now we're in an ice storm. We, our pond, dry, our pond froze up that the cows were drinking out of, and their watering trough froze which John had actually pumped it upside down and said they can drink out of the pond. Because normally here in Louisiana, our pond doesn't freeze over. I mean, normally it doesn't, okay? Not solid. It's a big old pond. Big. So it froze. He kept taking the bucket of the tractor and busting it open for him to drink, and it freeze right back up. So he went out there. This was two days ago. He went out to our... Um, Fence, and he said, let me see if I can get one of the faucets to go in outside because all our outdoor faucets are frozen. Well, he actually got the one that's by my garden. He got it to go in a little bit. It, some water was coming out of it. So he said, well, let me get a water hose. Well, the water hose was full of ice, so he brought it inside. We put it in front of the fireplace, thawed the water hose out, okay? And then we put... He went out there and hooked it up to that faucet that was working a little bit. And I'm going to rinse my potato off, guys. And then he, uh, he was trying to hold the water hose. Well, the cows were so thirsty. They kept coming up and bumping on the trough, water and trough, and knocking the water hose out. So we literally were standing there just freezing. So we said, let I said, let me, we were close to the canning kitchen because my canning kitchen is close to our garden spot. So I said, let me run in there and see if I can find something we'll tie the hose to the fence, baby, and uh, the cows won't be able to knock the hose out of the trough. And John said, that works. So I ran in, I ran up to my canning 
can it can kick him. And when I opened the door, well now here in where we are, all we ever have to do to get ready for winter weather is you leave your faucet dripping just a little bitty drip, 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 or maybe even a little tiny stream of water. And it usually keeps everything from freezing and you're good until things thaw. Well, I did that. We did that out of my candy kitchen. So this has been dripping, okay, for two days now. It's been dripping out there like that in freezing temps. What had happened, though, the drain outside froze, even though it's wrapped and winterized. Now, this is crazy. And so it just grew ice all the way back up the piping, all the way in the sink, filled up the sinks out there, that big old washboard sink out of John's grandparents' home, flowed over icicles onto the floor under the stove and the refrigerator and the freezer, and there was like two and three inches deep of ice all in that kitchen. <laughs> I was like, are you kidding me? I just gasped. I was like, ah! So I slid over there on the ice. The ice skated to my kitchen sink, and I turned the water off. I said, okay, forget that method. So I went out and told John, if I did find something to tie up the hose to the tent. And so I went out there, and I said, well, I got good news. And so we went on and got the cows tied up so they'll have water, their fence, the hose to the fence. And then John said, now let's go work on that project. So we stayed out there for an hour and a half, two hours, scraping, literally on our hands and knees, scraping ice out of, off the floor. John had to take a blowtorch and melt the drain to get the drain or melt the water in it to get the drain to drain out of the sink and melt the ice. We scraped ice and scraped ice. I had a 25-gallon garbage can out there that I used. We filled it up with ice five times off the floor and went and dumped it outside. It was, it was a mess. You hear me? A royal mess. <laughs> and that's the way everything we do seems like we get to do it over again. And... So we ended up just turning the water totally off to it, and it's going to freeze out there and bust from that. But it'll be running outside. When it thaws, then we can fix the water leak outside. So this is just so weird. This is just so weird for Louisiana. So strange. That normally works for us just fine. Jack, steady outside. Did you see him? Goodness. Jack, I can't let you outside, baby. You're going to freeze to death. Huh. Huh. Okay, y'all. I'm chopping my potato. I just want to tell y'all that lovely little story. And I'll come back to y'all this time and we'll be over by the stove. Into our melted butter, I'm going to put some of this frozen celery. I'm going to put a half a cup of this frozen celery. Isn't this nice to just have this on hand out of the freezer? Yes, it is. Half a cup of frozen celery. And a half a cup of this chopped onion. This was a yellow onion. It was Vidalia onion, actually. From Georgia! There we go. And then our one potato that we chopped, peeled and chopped, we're going to put that in there. Throw this around. Turn my fire down a bit. It was getting all cranked up, wasn't it? I don't put garlic in my pot pie, but if you like, you want to. It just isn't traditional for me. But if you want to, that would be a good time to put you some garlic in there. Um, I do put thyme. And I have some organic thyme right here. And I'm going to put one tablespoon, I mean one teaspoon, excuse me, one teaspoon of that. And y'all know I'm going to put all the uh, recipe and all the measurements in the description box on YouTube. And I'll try to do this um, also on on Facebook because I how I normally used to do this the last time I did this recipe was on my personal page on Facebook okay it's been a while um, since I did a video 
But all I would do at that time was do pictures of all the ingredients you need, and then I would um, do step-by-step -step pictures. So uh, I might try to post that on there too in case you just want to look at the step-by-steps and you don't want to hear all my yakking and talking and all my stories. <laughs> okay, guys. Get y'all back down here. Something else I love to put in here is parsley. And I'm going to do a tablespoon of parsley flakes. Mmm, that thyme already smells good in there. Do a tablespoon of parsley. Turning that down just a little more. And I'm going to put in a good pinch of salt, okay? And all these veggies, we're going to need that. And some fresh pepper. There we go. That smells wonderful. One other thing I have, y'all know I have this um, peas and carrots frozen bag. I'm going to put, and it's only a piece of the frozen bag, so I'm going to put those in there. And now I am going to actually put the lid on here and let this cook because our potatoes need to get cooked just a bit and our veggies need to soften and so then I will come back and we'll finish this but I'm going to put the lid on where's my lid here's my lid and I'm gonna let this go a few minutes just so those veggies will soften a bit and I'll be back Okay, y'all, I let these go for about five minutes covered because I was chopping our chicken over here and getting our chicken broth ready. I've got two and a half cups of our chicken broth that came off this um, thighs that we cooked. But if you don't have that and you're using a rotisserie chicken or some already cooked chicken, you can just use some canned chicken broth. But I got about two and a half cups, okay? All right, so now. Let's get stirring here. There's still some that butter in there, and we need to get us a little bit of a roux going in here. So I've got one quarter cup of all-purpose flour, and we're going to sprinkle that on here. And all we're going to do is stir this just for a couple of minutes around and let the raw flavor of flour get cooked off of our flour. <laughs> Just get that raw taste out of there. We're not going to do any browning or anything on this roux. It's just a thickening agent. It's all we need it to do is thicken. So, it doesn't have to brown, but we don't want to just dump the flour in there and not cook it just a minute because it'll have that raw flour taste. So, it just kind of gets that, gets the edge out there for us. It's looking good so far, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yummy. Okay, guys. That ought to be good enough right there. Some variations you can use, too, if you don't want to do... Of course, you don't have to do potatoes. You can do parsnips or you could do turnips chopped. You could... Um, if you don't like little English peas, I'm going to add some more. You could put some green beans uh, you can do whatever you want to in your pot pie, okay? Your chicken pot pie, whatever you want to do. Um, I'm going to also add some of these English peas. I'm going to get you back down here. That was a little, we love these little English peas. Like I say, if you don't, just put some green beans. I'm going to go on and put another good sprinkle. Maybe that's another cup in there of the English peas. And our flour, our flour has gotten nice and cooked for us while we were talking there for a minute. So I'm going to pour our two and a half cups of chicken broth in there. And get this up to a bowl, a boil, while we're waiting on that. Oh, we've got a lot of green peas in there now, don't we? That looks good. Um, the reason why I waited on the green peas is they're little frozen ones, and believe me, they're done as soon as they hit that hot, so I didn't leave them in there to cook with our potatoes and our carrots. Okay, I'm going to use turmeric now, y'all. Turmeric's really, really good for you. It's got 
anti-inflammatories and antibiotic properties in it. It can prevent all kinds of stuff. That is a half teaspoon of turmeric. I'm going to stir that around. It can prevent cancer, Alzheimer's. It can actually help with depression. So I love me some turmeric. Yes, I do. can help with arthritis. So another one of those God-given little things that grows right from the earth that helps us medicinally. Yes, it does. It's good for us. And it also gives your um, your pot pie a beautiful little yellow color. <laughs> you can also put it in your chicken and dressing and it gives your chicken and dressing a beautiful little yellow color. Let me let that come to a boil and thicken a bit for us and we're going to put our um, chicken in there. Our chopped chicken. I've got it chopped over here. I put it on a plastic uh, cutting board because I don't like to chop chicken on to my wood because I put that whole plastic cutting board into the dishwasher. I know lots of y'all have heard me say that a million times over and I'm going to get me a quarter cup of heavy cream, okay? Let me hold that in front of the camera. I got y'all right down there on the on the dish and I'm having, finding it hard to get it over there and show y'all. I uh, hope y'all can tell. If you can't, I'm going to tell you this is already thickening as the heat's coming on up, as it's coming up to a boil. And that's all I want it to do is thicken a bit for our pot pie. So let me stir that. Oh yeah, that's looking good. All right, now I'm just going to pour us a quarter cup of this heavy cream. Like I say, if you don't have that, just do um, some milk. And if you don't have that or you want to save that, if you're snowed in like we are, just save it and don't do any of it. And listen, I want to tell you something else too. If you don't have time to put in there, <laughs> if you don't have the spice time or the herb time, not time time, but if you don't have that and you don't have turmeric and all that and all you have is salt and pepper, put salt and pepper and I promise you, it's still going to be good, isn't it? I know. So don't, don't fret about that, um, or even parsley. But those are just some good things I had here and I put in there. But if all you have is salt and pepper, then put salt and pepper, and I promise you it's going to comfort you and warm you just as much as all this other is that I'm putting in here. I just happen to have it. Okay, guys, let's get back down here, and we will. It's coming to a boil, and it's sticking really nicely for me. And it is time for our chicken to get in there. Get in there. Y'all, I can hear myself when I'm talking and think, oh my goodness, I mean, you sure do sound country, girl. <laughs> I guess because I am, huh? There we go. My goodness, y'all. You could stop here if you want to and just have you a nice chicken stew or chicken soup, whatever you want to call it, but we're going we're gonna to put a good crust on there. Y'all see that yellow color that turmeric gave it? Doesn't it make it look good? I mean, it, it makes it real pleasing to the eye too, doesn't it? But it's really good for us. Okay, quarter cup of cream, like I said, if you don't have it, you don't have to put it. But I had it and I'm putting it. I'm down to drinking that in my coffee. I ran out of my coffee creamer, guys. It's tragic, isn't it? I know. <laughs> uh, that's hardly a sacrifice putting heavy cream in your coffee, isn't it? I know it. I know it. I need a real problem, don't I? Okay. There we go. Doesn't that look good, guys? I'm going to turn the fire off and let that cool. And I'm going to get us moved back over here to the island and we'll put this pot pie together. Just let it kind of cool. It doesn't have to get room temp or anything. All right, while our filling is cooling, I got out this puff pastry. Like I say, you can use pie crust, you can use a biscuit mix, some canned biscuits, whatever. This is what I had in the freezer because I love to keep this. And it comes in two sheets that's got three folds in it and I'm going to use an 8 by 10 casserole dish. You use whatever you want to. Sometimes I make John and me our um, single serving one. Of course this 
serve about two or three people. But I'll make us some in a cast iron skillet and put crust over the top of it just on a single serving, whatever you want to use. This is what I'm doing today. So I take and see how much of this puff pastry I need. And I'm going to need four of the folds. So I'm going to need a whole one here. I'll sprinkle a little flour on here. And this puff pastry just needs to thaw in your refrigerator because it needs to stay cold, okay? To do what it does, to do what it does and puff up for us, it needs to stay good and cold. And I'm going to use one more piece of this. I have me a cutter. There we go. I need that fourth fold there. And I'm going to put this back, okay? And I'll put it back in the freezer if I want to. And y'all, this, what's left over, I can make a dessert with if I want to. I've told y'all that, and I need to do that one time, but I'll slice some apples and put on top and paint some apricot jam or some orange marmalade on it and bake it. And it's delicious with a caramel sauce, I know. Sounds good, doesn't it? I know it. Okay, so this is all I'm doing is making me a bigger crust. I'm just dusting it with a little bit of flour. I've got my oven preheating and I don't remember what I cooked this at. Let me see. Let me see guys. If y'all don't mind, let me look. Oh goodness. Of course I can't find it if I try. I'm looking, I'm looking. <laughs> and I'm still looking. Let's see, does it have it on the instructions? No. Well, I know that our puff pastry has to go at about 400. So I'm going to say 400 and I'll correct myself when I come back and I'll let you know how long I let it bake. Usually it's going to be 20 minutes at least, if not 40, 30 or 40. So like I say, I'll look all that up. I have to go back and say, what did I do? What did I do last time? I know. And I'm kind of pinching these seam, this seam together to get it to go on there like one big piece of pastry. And you'll see little folds in the other. And I just roll it just a bit. All right. I might have got it too floury, but that's okay. It doesn't matter. I'm going to get it on there, on our casserole dish. I was going to do this without y'all, and I said, well, y'all like me to do this with y'all together. So I'm going to do it together with y'all. Let me make sure this can fit on here. Oh, yeah. That's going to fit. That's perfect. All right. No sticky. You see how he didn't go together with it because I didn't stick it before I put that flour, but it's not going to matter at all. No stress in the kitchen. This is all about de-stressing. Seriously, it is. All right. I'm going to get, this is what I chose to cook in, and I'm just going to spray it with some non-stick cooking spray, okay? The only thing about this puff pastry is it doesn't want to sit on your mixture. It'll literally just sink down in there and not puff up and be pretty. And I know that because I've done it. So Amy made the mistake for us. Like a pie crust, you can get away with that. You tuck it in that pie crust and he'll kind of stay on the top and maybe a little juice will bubble over. But that puff pastry, he'll just disappear for you. So, And he's not going to do what he needs to do or wants to do. So he needs to be off your mixture. So you need to have it big enough that you can fold it on the outside of your container. Even if it's in an individual serving, you're going to tuck it on the outside, okay? And instructions always tell you to make an egg wash with one egg. Um, stir it around real good with like a tablespoon of water. But I'm going to do it a little faster than that. I'm just going to use this olive oil spray and I'm just going to spray on the edge of it as well like that. Y'all see what I'm doing and on the inside y'all saw me do that. Okay let's put some of this filling in here. Scoot that over. Let me get me a, a hot pad because this is hot. There we are. It's cooled a bit but that pan is still hot hot hot. 
Let's see. I think I can do this. And again, we don't want our filling up to where that puff pastry is going to touch it, guys. It's very important. I did it one time. I said, oh, it'll be all right. And it wasn't all right. But we ate it anyway. <laughs> we did. All right. You see how, so whatever you do, don't fill it all the way to the top, whatever container you use. I'm just kind of stirring it around where that chicken will be evenly distributed in there. I'm going to come put y'all down on what I'm doing. I know y'all like to see straight on what I'm doing. Let me do that. Let me scoot y'all forward. Forward and down. There we go. Now. Now then, this already looks just so good, doesn't it, guys? You see how it's got a lip, like it's down in there. It's not up where the puff pastry will touch it, okay? Alrighty. And I'm going to drape this on the sides and stick it so it's off of that filling. But still really pretty, isn't it? Might have not done it quite enough. Let's get you up here to see what you need to be like, buddy. Buddy, here we go. Just a little. All right, and you're going to stick it. Just stretch it and stick it. Now I'm going to put this back in the refrigerator actually and let my puff pastry get good and chilled again so it'll puff up real pretty for us. Okay, guys, y'all see him? He's going to look good, isn't he? All right, let me put this in the refrigerator for about 30 minutes and let it get real good and chilled on top. And we'll slide it into the oven. What I was going to tell you, you can egg wash it. You could wash it. You could um, paint some. Here's the egg washer. Just paint it all on there, everywhere. Or you could put some cream on there, heavy cream or butter. But I'm just doing this little shortcut and I love it. It's just some of this sprayed olive oil cooking spray. So that way you don't have to use up all your stuff. Or if you're in that mad dash hurry like I was as a young mother with little ones, that's all we've got to do. And I love to do this, guys, is some sea salt. Sprinkle of sea salt on there. I ordered this from Amazon. And you don't have to do any of this. This is just for looks. Something I love to do... Uh -oh. Is, is dollop butter into this before I put the top on it and I didn't so hey that's probably best huh be less calories <laughs> but if you want to it's really good <laughs> all right guys I'm gonna let this chill in the um, refrigerator really good before I put it in the oven and I'll let y'all know what degrees and how long when I come back okay y'all it sat in the freezer. I actually slid it into the freezer to get good and cold on top for 20 minutes. And my oven is preheated to 400. It is. But I wanted to tell y'all, when I put it in the oven at 400, I'm then, when I close the door, I'm going to turn it down to 375 and let it bake for 45 minutes. But I want to stick it in there at 400 so that 400 degree heat will hit this puff pastry and begin to make it puff real quickly. And then it'll it'll cool back down to 375 and bake for me. So 400, put it in the oven, close the door, 375 for 45 minutes, and it's gonna be golden, bubbly, and pretty. Something else I want to tell y'all to do so y'all don't mess up your ovens and and fuss about me in my pot pie. It shouldn't bubble over because it has you know a nice lip under there for our puff pastry, but just in case, I'm going to slide a cookie sheet on the next shelf underneath it, just in case it needs to catch anything that might bubble over, and so I want you to do that too, so y'all won't be fussing at me, <laughs> and I wouldn't blame you. Hey guys, every time I come back on here, every time I come on, my hair gets worse and worse and worse. <laughs> John and I, um, I put this in the oven for 45 minutes, and John and I went out to give their cows, we're feeding our cows two times a day because of this horrible weather and they're just rolling through calories so we went out there and John spotted one of our heifers and we've been watching her knowing it's time for her to calf and sure enough 
we feel like she's in labor so um we had to corral her into a stall and get her some water and that sounds simple except for all the water's frozen so we've been carrying buckets of water out there to her and um some hay and all that good stuff and feed the rest of the cows so i'm back okay and I came back in here and I thought 45 minutes is plenty of time. No, I came in here and my timer was going off, but it must have just been going off. So let me get this out for us. And show y'all how gorgeous, how gorgeous this is. Let me come show y'all up close. I know y'all want to see up close. See how it puffed up? So beautiful. Gorgeous and pretty and beautiful. And it smells so good, I can actually smell that pepper that we put on top of it. It smells really good. Um, I'm going to let this rest, and then I'll cut into it for y'all. We'll get John to ask for the blessing for it, too. I'll be back. Okay, guys, it's been cool, and John and I drank this cup of coffee trying to warm back up. <laughs> Excuse how we look. We keep working on the farm. We stay outside more, and we do yeah. inside, don't we, baby? In this, in this snow time. Um, so we're going to cut into this after John says the blessing for us and let y'all see what it looks like. Dear yeah, Father, I just thank you for this meal for this time, Lord. I just ask you to watch over us, Lord. Just keep us safe. Be with the people, Lord, in our prayers. Be with our nation. We love you so much and thank you for the day. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs> okay, let's see how we can get into this. I'm going to try to cut a pretty piece for y'all. Does it look good, baby? It looks good. John loves this. Every time I, I make this, he says, Bob, you make this again. Do you remember telling yeah. me that, baby? Yeah. <laughs> Bob, you make this anytime. Mm -hmm. Woo! It's still warm, even though it's been in there cooling. What, about 20, 30 minutes? Yeah. Warm. Woo! All right, guys. Y'all see what a gorgeous piece piece of pie this is. Is that not pretty? Mm, flaky, be, flaky, 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 flaky. Mm. It is going to be good, isn't it, baby? Yeah, that's going to be good. All right, guys. We've got to go one more time out there and check the animals and make sure we got equipment that'll crank. Some of your equipment sprung a diesel leak, didn't it, baby? Yeah, yeah. always something. It is always something in this lovely weather. See, y'all take care. We love y'all, and we'll see y'all later. Oh, guys, we came out to feed the cows, and their troughs were filled with sleet and snow, so we've had to be shoveling that out first. <laughs> And now we've got y'all fed, huh, babies? And they've just got ice all over them. I hate it. I hate it. Goodness gracious. See the little red birds down there on the fence. Y'all see them? <laughs> they hang around so they can go eat chicken coop seed. Y'all see that? We'll go put them some more out. Well, no, they got plenty under there. I don't know if y'all can see, but I put them some on the lid down in there. They're eating on red birds and black birds. It's sleet and snowed all night, and it is continuing to do it. I don't know if y'all can see it coming down in the camera. But it won't go away. And this is not like us. Not us Louisianians. All the water's frozen. Our pond is just about frozen. It's got one little piece that the cows can drink out of. And I'll walk over there and show y'all. Huh. And the snow. Oh my goodness. I'm getting where I can hardly put one foot in front of the other. I've been, it's like I've been skiing trying to feed the cows or something. Goodness. Let's walk over here. See if we can, y'all can see this pond. The chicken's water was frozen. 
I had to get a bucket from inside the house. Goodness. Here's our pond. It usually goes from there all the way around the turn up there. And y'all see, it's, it's pretty well ice. John says they're finding some to drink somewhere. I don't know where. I'm gonna ask him again. Hey, baby, where'd you say the cows are getting the water from? They were busting it. They were stepping out in it, busting it, and then eating where they were, or drinking where they were uh, busting it from the oh, Okay, feet. right down there at that deepest end? Yeah. Okay. Would you ride the tractor down there? Yeah, yeah I went down there with the tractor and busted it in several places. Okay. Just to be sure that even the calves could find it. Okay. Where I always Good. see them drink from. Do you see the swimming pools even wanting to freeze over? Yep. <laughs> I know. Goodness. Goodness gracious. I'm filming this to see if to show everybody our winter storm here in Louisiana that we don't know what to do with. Right. Oh. Everybody up north says that they get this all the time and we just don't. I've always said if it was like this all the time during the winter, I wouldn't live here. <laughs> I might be having to move. <laughs> oh, I see a bird. Is that bird in her purple house up there? I believe she is. She's sitting there. She said, I'm moving too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that looks like there's more than one bird. I think there. so. I think she's got a little family in there. <laughs> oh, I don't blame y'all. here. <laughs> 